We are back. The topic we are discussing this morning is elder care, and I'm going to throw it to Ellie. You had a quote, which I read, which says that you believe the system is too punitive against nursing homes and that this doesn't really improve care. First of all, what are some of the uh, punitive uh, uh, ways that they will punish a nursing home? Well, let me tell you something. Um, uh, the nursing home industry is second to the nuclear industry when it comes to written regulations. There's no other industry that is really, more is regulated. Is it a book this thick? Um, Several. <laughs> and, it, and it's a very, very inconsistent enforcement system. Okay. Uh, I think uh, our legislators, our industry people, our consumers, we, we have to, we, we, we have to, uh, 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 what I would call, you know, enhance this enforcement system, system uh, into one that deals with quality care and outcomes. Now, if I can give you a real quick example. Go right ahead. Uh, outcomes, uh, uh, let's talk about outcomes. Uh, we had a, a, a resident in one of our facilities a couple of years ago that we admitted uh, he was dehydrated, he was in real bad shape. We did a heck of a job. Our speech therapist worked with the patient, you know, uh, worked uh, with her swallowing. Uh, our staff intervened. To so a you point, rehabilitated her? Yeah, to a point that the patient was up and about when the survey team came to survey the facility, they wrote a deficiency based on the fact that the, the medical record of that patient was missing a note from one of the physicians. In other words, the physician came to visit the patient, saw the patient one day, but didn't chart, didn't document. The facility was, was what we call a, a, a write-off. Was penalized because of it was the penalized did. because and, is, and was he an employee of yours? No, no, he was so you, not. You know, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm responsible, though. We are responsible to make sure that it's done. However, the point I'm trying to make is: listen, the patient was in great shape. The patient was here, and after three months, the patient was here. You know, so see, so the survey system progress. don't always measures the quality of care provided in a nursing. I'll open it up. Do you think that there's well, too many? I uh, agree rules. to some degree, but I think that when we're talking about caring for human beings, people. My grandmother, very personal. Uh, you know, I wish it were above in, and beyond the nuclear industry in terms of regulations because I want to make sure that all kinds of measures are being taken to ensure both the quality of care and the process of care. And it's unfortunate that, you know, human beings who are surveyors go out and do this evaluation. But I'd like people to be looking for those things because they're not always that uh, small in terms of, of the kinds of things that happen in nursing homes. People do fall down, people do die, people do have neglectful care. And so to the degree that we have to have regulation, I think it's critical. And you know, maybe we could debate that what kinds of regulation should be in place. But I think that, again, we are talking about people who are extremely vulnerable and potentially very at risk for well, negative damage to their, to their life expectancy as a result of our intervention. Well, let me so. say first, the industry does not approve of abuse and neglect mm -hmm. of the patient population that we serve. Sure. And our feeling, and I know Ellie and I have discussed it in Great Lakes, is we would like to see all poor providers be gone mm -hmm. because it makes our jobs more difficult. And we would like to see the survey process and the enforcement process focus on poor providers that are continually doing a poor job instead of penalizing those providers that are doing a good job but have an occasional issue from time to time. Well, well, Kathleen, do you think that uh, the system is too hard on the nursing homes? Well, I think Ellie does make a good point. I personally believe, like Laura, that we need to have regulations, that our surveyors need to come in and be vigilant about the care that they're receiving. But I do wonder how often they are looking at quality outcomes and looking at w the actual quality of life. Because you could have so a mean pristine... they just go by charts and numbers and graphs and You could stuff have a like pristine that. place that's doing a wonderful job and dotting all their I's and crossing all their T's and look at the environment. What kind of environment is actually there? Is it sterile? Is it... Are people thriving? Is it warm? Is it the kinds of things that really make a, a place for someone who lives a home? Mm. We, would, we would like to see more collaboration with the enforcement agencies between the industry in terms of best practices. Mm -hmm. What are some of the best things that are going on at some of the facilities that we can share? Looking at quality improvement programs that can be utilized to set standards for everybody that work and that we know that work and to work in well, collaboration. I mean, is there a way of grading them the way we're doing now with uh, restaurants? <laughs> there you, you go. Know, this nursing home is rated. I think, it's very, I think it's very it's difficult to do that idea. because the aging process itself is very difficult. How about difficult. we just rate every patient? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I got an A. Yes. 
You know, when you talk about the aging process, you talk about the frailty issues, mm -hmm. you know, loss of bone density, loss of muscle density, uh, nutrition and hydration issues, and each person ages differently, so it becomes very difficult to judge a facility in that category because they could have a population that has a much higher intensity of service needed to be provided to that population than another facility. And so that's why outcomes becomes very important because if you look at outcomes, then you can see that everybody is being measured in the same category. Um, I was reading a thing about how basically the Latino baby boomers that were going to be millions mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, by the year 2050, 13 million Latinos will be over 65, and nearly 3 million will be over 85. Mm -hmm. Yep. And yes. I think I'll be in that group. We eat well. We, uh, we eat well. well. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are there? You know, there's going to be, this is a booming industry, mm -hmm. correct, yes. basically, right. as the aging of America occurs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, do you see, foresee any changes in the industry? What will the nursing home of the year 2020 be like? Will it be a cyber nursing home or, you know? Well, I think there needs to be some alternatives. I mean, the nursing home provides a very important um, function for people who need that service, but there really does, we need to look at some alternatives. And there are lots of community-based programs that can offer alternatives to then being placed in a nursing home. In East Los Angeles, I work for a program that looks at this alternative, and we offer some of the same exact things that they would provide in the nursing home, but they can stay at home. Mm -hmm. You know, the van picks them up, brings them to our center, they can see the doctor, they can see the therapist, they can get their medications. We work with hospitals if they need to be uh, hospitalized, and yet the van can take them home at night and they can stay in their own homes. So Which there are a good. lot of creative things that need to happen um, for all of us as we age, and I think that the nursing homes are not going to be the answer for everybody and can't be. There has well, to be alternatives. The role of the nursing home has changed dramatically. Mm -hmm. If you look at the statistics, 70 percent of nursing home residents stay less than two months. So th that is a very dramatic change in the way the nursing home used to be. And also we're taking well, care of... It used to be really long term. It, right. We're, we're taking care of... home, Grandma. We're taking yeah. care of sicker, mm -hmm. um, more debilitated patients that have had major episodes that have caused them to be in that environment. Also, we find that the average nursing home resident needs four assistance in four adult daily living with bathing, dressing, mm -hmm. toileting, um, transferring. So they need a lot of services. And I think that, um, granted, you want to make sure that the person is in the right environment to be able to receive the right level of care. Mm -hmm. And that's very important in that process. I think that Kathy makes a great point because it's not just about looking at the services that older people need as just being the only option being nursing homes. I think that there's a, a, a range of services in the community that unfortunately in my work with Latino families working with folks with Alzheimer's disease, you find people who have been providing tremendous amounts of care for many, mm -hmm. many years. We'll see you on Cafe California. Thank you. Keep talking. And so one of the things that we find is that it's terribly important to provide families options for daycare, for home care, for transportation. Those are the things that really limit families so that they wait. We, you know, we encourage that. I found that. Scan, high resolution imaging that helps NASA and the Air Force train and prepare for emergencies. Panoscan 360 degree imaging helps law enforcement agencies with interactive maps and tactical planning to protect our schools. Panoscan, the choice for ultra high resolution panoramic imaging for homeland security, SWAT response, emergency preparedness, and crime scene documentation. podría usted comprar con 1250. 35 millones de personas lo invierten en una membresía con AARP. Y con esos 1250 al año, obtienen acceso a descuentos y muchos beneficios, como servicios legales y financieros, oportunidades para trabajar como voluntario y asistencia gratis en la preparación de sus impuestos. 
Llame, infórmese, hágase miembro y recibirá gratis un ejemplar de Segunda Juventud.